Hi, and welcome to Amongst the Books, a podcast for kids, by kids, and yes, adults too. My name is Andrew, and you're listening to episode three. Today's co-hosts, Annabelle and Zanip, are talking with award-winning graphic novelist Matt Fallon. Matt received the Scott O'Dell Award for his book, The Storm in the Barn, and is the illustrator for Newbery winner Higher Power Lucky, as well as several picture books. His latest being, You Are My Friend, the story of Mr. Rogers and his neighborhood. So join us as we learn more about Matt and where he gets his inspiration from. And now with the show. So thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, Today we are being, uh, today I'm actually having co-hosts. Sign up. And we are going to be interviewing, say it. Matt Fallon. Matt Fallon. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. And ladies, You're take welcome. it away. Okay. I'm sorry. You just all right. Okay. So we have some questions. Um, why do you like to write for this age group? Uh I love writing for uh your age group, that age group, because I feel like it's this wonderful sweet spot where you guys love books. You love reading and you love all kinds of different stories. I think sometimes teenagers, uh, they start to settle in and they're like, I like this one kind of story. But for these grades, you can try different kinds of things. And I found that kids will be like, yeah, I want to read that, which is really great for an author to be able to uh, do really cool stuff or historical fiction or something really silly and it seems like that group is you guys are more uh adventurous with your reading definitely more so than grown-ups all right have you always wanted to be a comic artist um no i uh when i grew up i was i i always wanted to do something creative with my life there was all kinds of different ideas um um i wanted to work in special effects i wanted to work for jim henson and the muppets for a while um then i went to college and i studied filmmaking and acting I to be an actor and i'm a screenwriter and then finally i came around to books where i feel like everything i was interested in came into one thing so that's when i decided to do that okay, okay. Were you inspired by a comic strip, or did you create your own style? Um, well, I have a lot of influences, a lot of things that inspired me um, growing up. Um, some of the really old things, like Prince Valiant was a comic strip, and Flash Gordon. Um, Charlie Brown and Snoopy was a big thing, something I really loved. And then when I was... Um, I think I was 15 when Calvin and Hobbes came out, and Calvin and Hobbes made a big impression on me. Uh, but when I started doing uh, the, the uh, graphic novels, uh, I didn't look at any other graphic novels when I started doing graphic novels because I didn't want to um, I didn't want to mimic somebody or, or have it feel like something else. So when I started doing the graphic novels. Um, it was as much me as possible, if that makes sense. So I wasn't, and actually I still do that. If I'm, I'm working on a graphic novel, I don't read other graphic novels because I want um, my books to feel different than what other books that are out there. All right. Um, do you plan on creating a sequel to any of your latest books? Um, well, I'm in a sort of a series things. None of my graphic novels, they were all the graphic novels, the four of the graphic novels were all designed as a standalone story. Uh, but the last year or two, I've been writing these books, um, Knights versus Dinosaurs. And this is actually a series. So it's Knights versus Dinosaurs, Knights versus Monsters. And I'm just now, um, like today, today, finishing up the third book of that series. So that was my first sort of jump into uh, the world of series. Although these books are uh, chapter books, there's a lot of illustration and there's some comics in them, but mostly they're uh, chapter books, which was something new for me after doing the graphic novels. Because I didn't want to just be, I didn't want to limit myself to just graphic novels. I do picture books, I do chapter books, I do graphic novels. I'm interested in all different kinds of books. 
Okay. Was your book Storm in the Barn based on your life? No. <laughs> not at all. Um, okay. Not at all. That completely, you know, people say write what you know. Um, I don't really do that. I write, write stories that I kind of want to know about. The only thing about the Storm in the Barn that I can point to as something that happened to me is, is um, when I was maybe eight or nine, say, there's a, um, there's a place near me that has a, a battlefield from the Revolutionary War, and it's a big farm, and there, there is a barn. And you're allowed to come into the bottom of the barn where the horse stalls were. And I was in there by myself once. Parents were there. And I would crawl through this little one of the whole um, horse stall. I climbed up through there. And what it led me into was the big part of the barn where the hay bales were and stuff like that. Uh, and you weren't supposed to be in there. It was super dark. And every time you took a step, the floorboards creaked. And I vividly remember that feeling of being alone in a big, shadowy barn. So I think that feeling from that moment when I was a kid worked its way into the storm in the barn. Um, but it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't me saying, oh, I remember that. Let's write a book. The story. But that is something that definitely happened to me when I was a kid. And I remember that feeling. Cam, okay. nice. Nice. Okay, um, how did you feel when you won a Scott Odell Award for the for your um, book, Storm in the Barn? I couldn't believe it. I, it was crazy. I was, um, I was absolutely floored by that. Um, it's not the kind of thing that you're nominated for, so when you, you win that award, it's, it's a complete surprise. Uh, but it was an extra surprise for me because it, it had never been awarded to a graphic novel before. I still think to this day that's the only graphic novel that's won the Scottsdale Award. So uh, it was definitely not on my radar. I, I'm thrilled, uh, extremely honored by it. I mean, I love Scott O'Dell as well. Um, and I love that, that those judges recognize The Storm in the Barn not as a graphic novel, but as a novel, as historical fiction. And they saw that there was no real difference between a prose novel and a graphic novel, which I thought was great for both my book and for graphic novel as a whole, because they're not, and I've said this before, they're not a genre. Uh, graphic novels are just a medium. It's just a way of telling a story. So when I got the Scott O'Dell Award, it was this committee that gives awards out, usually the chapter, saying, well, this is, this is also a novel. There's not fundamentally different about it. It's just a different kind of a novel. No, I think that's so true that the graphic novels now are taking on so much more than just what everyone thinks. Like they always assumed that it was a comic. Um, now it's really touching on more historical nonfiction um, biography even. I mean, so this is a huge, huge change in how it is viewed anymore. And I love that about graphic novels now. Yeah, it really is. It really, really is just a way of telling a story, kind of like how, uh, a fiction novelist can write in prose, or they can say, oh, let me tell the story in verse, you know? It's like that sort of choice. Uh, and I'm glad it's being recognized. And it really took um, kids' graphic novels to do that, because the adult world of graphic novels are really stuck in superhero, or it's really dark stuff. But right. It was the children thing that, that broke out more things like nonfiction or historical with, you know, Raina's books and things. Right. Okay. Um, how long did it take you to create the book Snow White? Well, that is the downside of graphic novels. Um, they <laughs> take about three years. Um, Snow White, I thought about the story of Snow White uh, for about 10, I don't know, maybe almost 10 years. I remember having notes for this idea for Snow White when I was working on the storm. Um, so it was around for a while. And then by the time I sat down to write it, I wrote it fairly quickly. But it took, you know, it takes five months maybe to just sketch it. Uh, and uh, I think I, that was the fastest I've ever drawn a book. I think I drew this in about eight, eight months, no, nine or 10 months. 
Uh, but that's after maybe six or seven months of doing the sketches and the writing and back and forth by the editor. So it usually takes about three years to make a graphic novel for me. And that's a lot because I'm also painting it. You know, some people will draw them and then hand it to somebody else to do digital color. And that kind of speeds it up a little bit, but because I, for some reason, insist on painting them, uh, they take a little bit longer. Okay. okay. In your book, Around the World, the character Thomas Stevens rides a bicycle. Did you ever learn how to ride one? Not one of those bicycles. Uh, <laughs> not one of the big ones. I thought about uh, when I was researching the but I should ride one of these big wheel bicycles uh, and they're clubs of, um, and you can buy re replicas of the original ones. But my wife pointed out that I would probably get up on it and within minutes fall off and break my drawing <laughs> arm, which would be <laughs> what I was trying to do. I still have not ridden one of those, but I'd, I'd like to. And that's one of the, that for me, that was one of the appeals of Thomas Stevens' story that he not only that he rode around the world on a bicycle, but it was that kind of bicycle and the crazy big wheel bicycles. Someday I'll ride one. <laughs> what is the process of your bookmaking? Like, uh, what do you do first? I always write the story first. Uh, I'll write the whole a script out without drawing anything. So it, it kind of looks like a movie script a little bit, like a play. And what I do is I describe um, every panel that you see, you know, the panels being a little, a little, I'll describe what you're going to see in each panel and the dialogue. Uh, and that goes to my editor and we go back and forth for a long time working on the story, making sure the story is as good as possible before I start drawing. Then drawing, these are very simple, small, what they call thumbnail sketches, and I sketch out the whole book. And that's really where all the major um, decisions about the book are actually made in the sketches. But by the time I do the final paintings, all of the decisions have been made. It's really, um, I look at it as sort of like, if you're an actor, your rehearsal is the and your performance is your best version. So when I sit down to paint, um, I know what I'm going to paint. I'm just doing the best painting I can do. But, but all the big decisions about the story and what you're going to see is all done earlier in the writing stage and the sketching stage. So the sketching actually is my favorite part of making the book, is, is the sketches. Do you always work with paint? Is that like your favorite medium? Yeah. I, um, uh, because a lot of it is like coming out of picture books where I was always doing full painting, but, but I love watercolor and I love what it can, uh, uh, how surprising. For The Storm in the Barn, I experimented with different things, including digital. Nothing gave me sort of the unpredictable quality of, never, nothing gave me that dusty feel like watercolor, right. did, which is ironic. Water, but, <laughs> you know, for me, it was actually faster to do that because, because I don't work in computer, so uh, it would actually take me longer to do a computer. Um, but I can't, I can't get a computer to do what I can get the watercolor to do, which is basically have some spontaneity and some unpredictability, which are two things that computers are not good for. Right, right. Okay. What was your main goal to reach your readers in the book Bluffton? Well, Bluffton, um, a couple of things. I think Bluffton is probably my most personal book uh, in that there's a lot of me in that book, I think. Uh, again, not autobiographical, although the Henry character is basically was easy for me to write because it was sort of, what would I have been like if I met Buster Keaton as a kid? Um, but another part of it was actually to introduce kids to Buster Keaton because when I was working on the book, I would do school visits and kids would ask, what are you working on? And I'd say, a book about Buster Keaton. And nobody knew who he was. You know, very few kids knew who Charlie Ch Chaplin was. And I think that's that's a problem. I think kids should know who Buster Keaton is and Charlie Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy. Um, this history of these great comedians, these great artists, if we don't pass on what these people did, people will forget them. Um, so I thought part of it was 
producing Buster Generation, which is one of the most gratifying things about that book when I, from a kid who will say, oh, I read Bluffton, I loved it. And then I looked at a Buster Keaton movie and it was hilarious. And they've mm-hmm. become Buster Keaton fans for life. And that's, that's like the best. Nice. So, um, are you working on any new books? Yeah, I'm finishing up. Uh, like I said, I'm just I'm just now finishing up the third and maybe final book in this Knights trilogy, um, and that'll be out next year. And I'm starting to write another book right now. Um, it's going to be another, I think, another chapter book with a lot of illustrations, completely different. And um, hopefully, I'll be writing that and drawing that next year. It's too early for me to really talk about it. Um, but I will say it's completely different from anything I have done before, which is always something I'm trying to do with my books. I, I don't like to, um, I don't want to repeat myself. So that's why, you know, after Snow White, I didn't just take another fairy tale and put it in a different time. You know, I did this goofy book, Knights versus Dinosaurs, because I like to change what I'm doing and try something new. Okay. And Matt, I know that you have to get going. So, and we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Yeah, thank um, you. So, yeah. and I know, um, I I think I read that, that you have a, a picture book that's out right now about Mr. Rogers. Did I read that yeah. right? That's right. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it's called You Are My Friend. Um, where is it? Yeah, You Are My Friend. <laughs> the story yeah. of Mr. Rogers. And I was, that was a real thrill. Uh, it's the first picture book biography about Fred Rogers, and I'm a big fan. I grew up watching the show, and I saw the documentary yesterday, and he's just one of the most wonderful, he's just a wonderful person, again, kind of like Buster Keaton, in that I think people should know about him, and what I love about that book, You Are My Friend, is you don't necessarily have to know anything about the TV show. It's about this right. little boy bullied and how he he grew up to, you know, value feelings and get that across. perfect job with the words. So when I was given the text for me to illustrate, it was just a pure joy. And, uh, and like I said, it's kind of, it's kind of, I felt like it was an honor to do that book. Yeah, excellent. I saw it. I was like, I can't wait to read this because as a huge fan of Mr. Rogers and growing up with him, it's definitely, I was like, I need to look at this book. Um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. It might make you a little weepy, so be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, again, Matt, thank you so much. Ladies, do you have anything you want to say? Yeah, thank, yeah. You, thank you, Mr. Fallon. Thank you. We are well, so grateful. For, okay, well, thank you for your great questions, guys. And, uh, you know, keep reading, keep, keep drawing, keep doing all that kind of stuff. And if you have any follow-ups, you can just email me, and I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Excellent. Thank you. you Um, Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to today's episode. A special thanks to Matt Fallon for spending your time with us. Be sure to follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Fallon Draws or visit him at www.mattfallon.com. Today's episode was produced by Miss S in the school's library and hosted by Annabelle and Zanet. You can follow Amongst the Books on Twitter at Amongst the Books underscore podcast and on Instagram at Amongst the Books podcast. Our theme music was written, performed, and recorded by Jake Thistle. You can follow Jake at www.jakethistle.com. That's J-A-K-E-T-H-I-S-T-L-E dot com. Subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts and be sure to tell your friends. My name is Andrew and thanks for listening and you'll be hearing from us soon.